Hello everyone, Tack Power here with a new match from a new tournament, the Single Division Tournament here. Let's dive right in on Shechedrin. And on the left in the red, we have Insha returning with 358th Strelki on Maverick Income. And on the right in the blue, we have Farad Rommel playing 7th Mechanized also on Maverick Income. So very exciting to see Insha return. Single division tournament, a very interesting one. Each player gets one division for the entire tournament. That's it. And no other player could be playing the same division. So we're going to see only unique matchups. Um, and it's a it's a best of one. Like it's only one game for each match. So you lose, you're out. It's very simple. Here we go. Let's dive into these decks here on the left here. We have Insha playing 358. 358th, an interesting deck. We don't see it a ton. It's definitely a low B tier, high C tier sort of division. Um, it has very real problems that can be really tough to overcome. Uh, but anyway, Recon Tab, really strong. You get lots of snipers, BA 10s and T70s, which is just a great mix of Soviet recon units. Your infantry tab is really strong with probably this one of the strongest CQC units in the game with the group of Zakhtitsky. These guys have Swomis and Flamers and the whole nine yards. They're very, very good. Uh, the rest of the infantry, pretty lackluster, just standard Shelky DPs and such. Uh, then your tank tab, really underwhelming, just T60s, T70s, and a card of T3476. So basically just light tank spam with one card of medium tanks. It can be rough. Your support tab, it's got the usual mix of Soviet support, although nothing at 2K range, which can, which can definitely be problematic. Your AT tab, pretty fantastic. You do have the VZVOD PTRs, uh, which are triple like ptr teams you have 45 mils isu 15 uh, 122 and isu 122 s's even with assist two so you do get a lot of good stuff not a huge fan of isu 122 though i find them to be extremely overwhelming especially con compared to their cousin the isu 152 which is beyond phenomenal uh your aa tab it it's all right you get 25 mils and i think I think you get 37 mils. He's just not bringing them. Your Arty tab, pretty good. You do get Morser 210 captured German guns there, which is pretty cool, and Katusha's and F-22. I think there's some other Arty in there as well. Your air tab can be much bigger, but he's only bringing fighters and a P... Uh, Po two, so kind of surprising. Very, very light air tab, and I thought that's usually a part of the division you kind of want to stress. On the other side, seventh mechanized, a very solid division. High B tier, I'd probably put it in. Uh, low A tier, perhaps somewhere in that zone. Uh, but some people play it very, very well. It, it can do very well. Uh, your recon tab, eh, it's it's kind of an underwhelming here. It just has the dozer and the carry douche which can be quite annoying. Your infantry tab, pretty solid. You get Strelke DPs across the board, tankos. I mean, it's just basically normal Russian infantry, but you do get the three cards of DPs. Uh, your tank tab, basically T3476 spam, along with the super cheap SU76. Your support tab, really good, where you have SU152s and SU122s. Your AT tab, it's it's pretty good. You do get Zis 3s, M42s, SU85s, and the ISU122S. A tab, fine, 25 mils, 37 mils. RD tab, a good mix of stuff here with off map as well. And you get P2s in the air tab, which makes it pretty solid. Let's dive right in here. We have a PE3R right off the bat out of Farad, checking out what's going on. Huge bunch of stuff coming up here onto the hill. We do see an early SU152 uh, there on the other side. Not nearly as much coming from Inshaw. We do have to remember, too, Inshaw, like, really out of practice here. He has not played. I haven't seen him in a tournament in quite a long time since the last season, maybe. Uh, of league so we'll see how much of that lack of playing has you know changed him uh, but we do see a katusha queued up here so he did spend early on a katusha i mean it's only 80 points not exactly expensive it's quite far though so we'll see how much that can actually do although uh fair not even on the hill yet and the place he's going to actually is going to dodge the majority of the rockets awkward there Groups at GC do get in. Tanko's coming in in the M2A1 slow, but they will support a lot. Assault gun spotting out that Tanko. This flag currently in Insha's hand with that 14-10 early. On this map, it's very easy for Red to get an early lead, but I don't actually think the map's unfair. Just, you can definitely get an early lead with Red. Usually, Blue can get up on this hill first, but uh, Fair did not make that attempt. And Fair playing actually abnormally unaggressively. It's kind of weird to see. He's usually just... Push, push, attack, 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 push, attack, push, attack some more. And this time he's really not. Katusha Strike does fall. He, he changed the location, landing it further back, and it does a nice hit here, although I'm not sure what it was designed to do, just keep things off the hill, I guess. BA-10 should be able to kill this carrier, Dushko, which otherwise would pin down absolutely everything and be super obnoxious. This 
three. Took a whole bunch of hits from the assault gun here. Assault gun does fire the 45 mil. Assault gun should win. I mean, it's obviously designed to kill units. Uh, Tankos and Sapri actually overwhelming the group of Zachiski, which is quite impressive because those things are very, very good. 45 mil laying down a lot of hurt. But it looks like it will get away. Sniper on the hill giving information. P2 bomber coming in. Uh, it does have a nice bomb out of here. Should do a lot of damage. T70s coming up on the hill. These are just the gun one, but the T60 is the auto cannon. See if this bombing strike does enough. Nope, totally misses actually. SU-76s though should do plenty to kill these light tanks. Although T-70s can definitely respond. SU-76 with very light armor uh, comparatively. Medium tank, a T-34 gun, but light armor. P-39 trying to get it back on the back of this P-2. But uh, Ferret is micro although he's, he's smoking. SU-76 hitting the assault gun. P-39 looks like it might get on the back of it. Oh, and there it is. That's the turn. Down the P-2 goes. Big loss there for Ferret. Uh, P-39 still alive, too, so nice play there from Incha. Early kill, definitely a big deal. Sabri Kumarotti does have a Panzerfaust, so that might be able to kill off one of these SU-76s. Po-2 giving some nice information, although it's slowly getting forced off by the 50 cals. Up north, nothing really happened in the town except for our carrier Dushka. We do see an 82 mil mortar searching for some of those group Zatshiski, I, I would assume. Flag still being held by Incha here on the th solid 1311. Strelke DP putting some... Uh, uh, PTR rounds down range here. T70, T60 moving up, but not going all the way, not committing yet. Maxim did push forward, but it is caught out by the Strelke, although Strelke doesn't do much. Carrier Dushka does find the Strelke SVT. Will it get into position in time? It does. Will the grenade land? It misses. Oh, the stress. Oh, the stress of it all. Pushes him back. T-70 goes down, so first armor unit down, but one armor unit was lost here. Just the carrier douche guy, actually, so that's not great. The SU-76s are still alive, and the T-60 has autocannons and not a gun. DPs catch out the Strelke SVTs, though. That should do quite well. This Sapri Komroti could try to get in here. Group Zatiski. Let's check these guys out really quick. Two auto uh, automatic rifles here. Important to notice those are not rifles. Five Swomis and... A flamer so just so good t60 moving around to try to find that strokey svt just short su76 takes out the ba10 with a bounce from the ptr so no luck there armor wise strokey get pinned down zashi c and tankos just out of range of each other the groups that she are not performing as well as i assume they would i guess this I guess this auto cannon can't fire unless it's sit standing still. That's kind of weird. It does not sound right at all. These guys shouldn't surrender because of the leader here. And Fair did recapture his flag here. So Incha with a slight lead to start, but nothing, nothing overwhelming there. Incha definitely looking a little slow in the micro. Tanko did get in, although the group Sachiski should easily win this at double star in the woods. I would think there should be no question of this victory. Let's check out how this goes. Oh, yeah. And now he's running. I mean, we, we didn't really get a definitive completion of that fight, but I think the group had it. P2, nice bombing strike on those infantry hitting that DP. 25 mil in to hit off that P2, but that's not going to be enough to stop a P2 bombing strike. Might shoot it down at some point, but groups of Chiski are taking a lot of damage. I don't understand why they're not winning out against Tankos. They should easily win with five Swomis along with the automatic rifles. Kind of shocking, really. Both SU-76s did survive, though, so they're going to continue to just put pressure here. Bunch of light armor coming up. B-Phase, of course, unlocks the T-34. We do see an early F-22 going after the Zis-3, which is funny. It's like a very similar weapon. It's not, it's not the same, but it is kind of functions very similarly. Yeah, Incha leaving troops out here. It's very... Seems weird. T-60, though, does dodge the SU-76. He's fast moving this one over here. Interesting. Now the Zachitsky are moving in over to this side. Not sure what this maneuver is for. P-3 coming in, though. Give me lots of information. Mortar coming down to try to force things out of here. P-39 coming in for that. The nice thing with this P-39 is it does have a 37 mil cannon, which means... If it gets on target, it does a fair amount of damage, but it's not super maneuverable for a plane, and it is 
I mean, it's not super expensive, I guess. It does have the machine guns as well, so it, it puts out some good damage, but it's not the fastest. It has bad resilience. Definitely not a perfect fighter, but not the worst you could call, and that's 100% for sure. Like, it won't catch this P-39 because of its slow speed. Infantry guns do a nice job here. For only 30 points, they, they do a lot of work. As Shulky SVT pushing forward here, I'm not sure what he's looking for. He's going to get caught. Now, the SU-76 doesn't have a machine gun, so it does a lot less. T-60 appears to have found the maxim here. Might be able to kill that and capture this flag back and give uh, Inshaw the point lead again. Let's see if it falls back far enough. Looks like it will. There it is. So, Inshaw back on the pressure. Remember, this is mirror income, so neither of these players have any advantage at any point. Groups out GC forced out again. Now they should do a lot of damage with the Swomies and the automatic rifles here at range. Shrug SVT pinned down. I don't know if Farage is out microing here at CQC or what's going on because I really thought the Grupa were just so much stronger. F-22s are active now. Finding targets all over the map. Maxim in a nice spot here to look down the road. It doesn't look like there's a line of sight from this side, but there absolutely is. Coming up to B phase. Groups that GC get into the woods here. Strelke DP go down. There's a lot of armor here. Uh, not yet. Yeah, Inchon needs to fall back. I'm not sure what he's hoping to achieve right now by getting over that hill. There's nothing there. SU-152 finding the assault gun as well. That's going to get absolutely mutilated. Katushi sits un uh, unloaded here, basically. Shulky SVT can't decide where to fall back. SU-152 on the hill now finding the T-60 in the town. Gets an engine solo. These SU-152s get like an insane amount of crits. I don't understand why they get so many crits. I don't feel like the Gorilla gets that many crits or any of the other high explosive weapons in the game get nearly as many crits as the, uh, the SU-152. I just don't understand. Shulky DP, even though it's out in the open, do have help from the Maxim, so they may still win that out. Armor was pushed back. The VZ VOD, while definitely... I mean, these VZ VOD are actually really good because they have Lattes instead of... instead of uh, usual PTRS. So this, this this is actually very good. And it has a grenade, too, for, like, the why not. P2 going to get a big bombing run here into the, the woods. Everything on the run. Oh, oh. Oops, that's easy. He's still alive in there, though. Double 82 mil mortar now. F-22s really didn't do much. I, I don't love these. I mean, really just for annoying counter battery, but nothing more. But Inshaw's still on the 13 level. We're now into B phase. So now T-34s can start coming in from the other side here, which is a big deal because that those can actually counter. I shouldn't say counter, but they can actually deal with these other T-34s and SU-76s somewhat efficiently. We haven't seen any big ISUs, though. Salt gun with the early shot should beat the Zis 3L. Zis 3 does some nice HE damage. It is forced off. Artillerist on the hill here. Do you see a 25 mil to force off that Po 2? Leader here causing a lot of change in the front line. Remember, leaders cause an abnormal amount of front line push. A 2 mil mortar going after anything it can find. Both these players, I mean, Inshaw's not looking too rusty. He's been all over stuff. F-22 going after that SU-152. These are quite annoying to deal with. The double F-22 might be able to do something. Tankos get in. How many Tankos does he have? Just the six in, in uh, A phase. So Farad's almost out of Tankos. And there's a whole other card of Group Zachistki. Oh, I do see an ISU-122. Just notice that. Gets a loader wounded crit from the SU-85. Oh, that's so bad. But does land its one shot and kills it. What a hit. That really sucks. And this is the issue with the ISU-122. Lower armor uh, for this price point. Lower armor means it does get beaten by a lot of other armor that's just not that big of a deal. But here comes the big push on the hill. Strokey SVT falling back, although they really should almost push forward to try to get their grenade off. They do get a grenade off to kill one of the uh, M2A1s. That's actually a big deal because that was going to be an issue. ISU-122 needs to re-aim uh, itself. Armor is now forced off because, of course, there's no chance. E the, these do not have any chance against that, even at close range. 
T70 poking forward. Tango's finally pinned down. Groove's at GC finally in to get them. Tango's finally going down, but that leader SU is going to be an issue. SU-1-5-2 finally gets moved a little. It took a lot of HD damage, so it should go down relatively soon. P-39 is not going to get by that 25 mil yet. It does fall back in time, so it is safe. Although the hill now under control of Farid. But Incha still on the 1311 with the town flag now captured instead, along with this flag on the hill. Salkan's finally going down here, although they've done their damage. They really have. Artillerist sneaks into the woods and is going after the Zis 3. I love this. This is hilarious. Does the Zis 3 still win? Like, I, I just don't even know. VZVOD did its best, but of course, it can't kill those tanks. Would have been fine against the half tracks if any remain. F 22 is now going after this blob of armor to force them off. T 34 is now in as well. SU 85, though, going to be an issue. That's going to be the. Oh, ISU 122 goes down to the SU 85. Oh. And that is, again, that is the issue. It's a 145 point unit that dies to many medium tanks, honestly. There's another ISU 122. I mean, you get it because it one shot stuff. I mean, that's really why. Armor Blob pushing forward here, pushing here is Farid. Now we're starting to see the aggression as Farid starts to throw blobs of armor forward. I know this is one of his favorite divisions, and he does play it very well. Really kind of, it really kind of matters how the armor stacks up here. This too, though, might be the deciding factor if we can actually take out some of this armor before it gets away. And it does take out the SU-85, so a nice kill there. M2A1s run into the T-34, so that should be no lo not long for this world. Another SU-76 goes down. Big kills on the hill here. All of a sudden, Farid's push in a lot of trouble. ISU-122S there. And now this other blob pushed into the center here, capturing this flag currently 12 tilt. But here comes another ISU-122, which can take care of this stuff at the 2K range. The town looking very much in Shaw's favor. He's got more T-70 leaders coming in now, too. But Farad capturing two flags. Losing this hill is really rough for the red side. I mean, either side, really. It's very rough. ISU-122S needs to be the... the, the uh, Equalizer here. What is that SU-152 going after? Is it going after the ISU-122S? It is. Let's see if it gets the usual crits it magically gets. Unless the ISU-122 can land its first shot. It doesn't, actually. Wow. Rough. Those things tend to, honestly. Way more than the card suggests they should. Another shot is away. And down the SU-152 goes. Not after landing one more death shot. ISU-122 is trying to get this armor before it gets up into the hill. This 2 and the 45 mil are going to have an issue with these at close range, but a whole bunch of Grupa Zachiski now back into the woods here on this hill. SU uh, T-34 under attack from the T uh, this 3 definitely a lot of danger there. Probably going to lose it, unless he does something about it. Gets a driver knocked out, Crip, but now they spotted it so they can fire back. Down 176 goes. That's definitely not good. 45 mil going really far. Dushka. Nope, it's got, well, it's almost that ammo, but it's still got ammo. That's for SU-76 goes down to another magical 122S shot. Can't miss, won't miss. You know it, folks. Off map in up north. Gross, Ferret. I curse your unit. I curse him to death. 203 is a very strong off map, too. This is going to hurt a lot. And here comes the M2A1 to surrender stuff, which, again, is complete baloney sugar. Group goes down. I mean, some pretty good damage, too. That off-map's pretty heavy, so not only does it do the suppressing, it does the killing. SU-76 goes down. Armor on the hill is now gone. T-60 is the top dog. Here comes the T-34 leaders, though. Infantry forced off. Farad still on the 1311, but he is extending and extending hard. He's now lost this flag and says he's about to lose this flag. ISU-122S pushing down south. There is one on the other side as well. Whole bunch of armor coming in to counter this, but the T-34 looks to already be dead. A lot of the armor is already dead. DP trying to take out the M2A1. Sapri get out just in time. M2A1 bounces another shot, though. That 50 cal doing what it does. But the problem is there's too many targets, and it's switching. It's not fully pinning down any of the units. 
So that goes down. P2, though, big bombing strike, 25 mil. Again, just not enough. He really needs more of those. He actually wants to stop these planes. Kind of odd to only bring in one card of 25 mils, truthfully. Sapri really have no chance against these uh, Chiski. Look how much damage they take. Yeah, this is war. This is more what I was expecting to see. I did not expect the Tankos to hold up so well. P2 is though doing just tons of damage. He really needs more AA. We have a double Katusha in. The fighter's not enough, but the flag up north recaptured here. Well, not recaptured here and captured by Farad now. T60 is not going to stop these Su-76s. T70 has a chance, but it's certainly not your top choice, I would think. P2 flying over a long time. Fortunately, the other one targeting the less suppressed. The P2 is doing a ton of damage. He has six in his deck, so that one loss at the beginning is certainly not holding him off. T34 is coming in. Do we see any more AA? There we go. We see finally another 25 mil. ISU-122S going after something down the road here, it looks like. Yeah. Hitting the Sapity. Definitely a waste. Ooh. Transport kill here from the 45 mil that just got brought in. Nice kill there. So Chiski caught out in the open by this M2A1. T70 moving to respond. Another off map coming down. There's not much here, but it will certainly push out what is here. T70 has APCR on, so that M2A1 is going to survive that first shot. Although... Inchon making progress down south here. Has recaptured his flag. This two probably should work its way up on the hill, but the SU-122, ISU-122S combo going to be an issue. Shulky DP goes down. SU-76 is the only armor holding the ground, although this KV-1 is, is a KV-1. This is a tank with off-map, so it's a pretty efficient investment, quite frankly, because the KV you call in is probably 60, I think it's 65 points, this unit. Um, and then slap on off map. It's technically for the price of the actual off map, one of the cheapest off maps in the game. It obviously is not literally, but if you deduct the cost of the tank that it is on, you usually don't get a tank with your off map. It is quite an efficient buy. This two now on the hill in a really nice spot. Let's see if we can take out that S uh, T thirty four seventy six. Does get one pen. Should get the second. This two when it's in range is a very good AT gun. It fires pretty fast at twelve. It shots very fast at twelve rounds a minute. The problem is it's, it's penetration on the AP shell is actually pretty lackluster at 120 millimeters. So, you know, from there, it's not great. Like this I-2122, it's going to really struggle to kill this. Really, really struggle. SU-122 trying to find it, can't get there in time. And we're now into C phase, so both players can be choked on ammo. Let's see who gets lucky first. Ooh, both missed the first shot, but this is a two-star IC-122S. I would think it has the advantage, but Farad decides it's not worth it and bails on the fight. I mean, Inshaw brought all his ISUs in with double vet, which is probably the right choice. And here comes a Katusha strike on that ISU-122. Uh, this is one, two, he has three. Farad has three of them. Here comes the double Katusha strike. We'll catch his Maxim out accidentally, so that's not so bad. Katushi has let to act, yet to really land a hit. It did there. Okay, now we got a couple hits going on. Katusha strike failing miserably. This will be the time to hop this up, and he is. He is not wasting the opportunity. With the suppression on both these units, going to really struggle. SU, uh, this two squaring up against the SU-122, but that is super suppressed, so that first shot should go really wide. It doesn't. This two gets a hit. And takes out the SU-122. Nice kill there. ISU-122S now up on the hill as well. What's it doing? Kind of an odd pathing. He doesn't want to take that out. SU-85 goes down. ISU-122S squaring up again. This one will get the first shot. Will the two-star land the hit? If they hit, it will pen. Yeah, and it dies. Oh, and the, the, uh, <laughs> oh, the luck gods not smiling here on Ferret today. Losing these ISU-122 bat uh, battles. Not great. Up here in the town, uh, Incha is working his way back in. The push by Farad, not super strong. And like I said, I, I just feel like Farad's been really throwing troops at stuff to get ground and not necessarily to trade well. Oh, the ISU-122 bounces. The T-34, T-34 goes down. ISU-122 falls back. 
Another armor down. Inshaw coming out strong in these trades right now. But Farad's still on the 1311. But for a long game, if we zoom out here, we can see Red with a lot more stuff. He's got Artie in the back here. No Artie over here. Another 203 off map coming in. Not a huge fan of that at this point in the game. It's a lot of points. And it's, it's not actually like a strong push. It's just pushing stuff back temporarily. This is not the time an off map is very good. I see Woot 122S moving back in to take another rumble here. Ooh, ISU takes a side shot. Is this two on it? Takes it out. Oh, that's huge. P2's in again. He needs more AA down here. He's, he should have at least one more. He should have three more, I would think. P2's are still a really strong factor. And I just feel like Inshaw's not respecting that. KV-1 showing why it's a super efficient, because it's now being a tank. That's the only reason I don't completely hate this off-map column, because it's still a tank, so it's like, all right. You know, it's not like you're not calling in a unit. It's just not calling a strong frontline unit. Looks like his plan is to hit this, recapture this flag here. But Inshaw is pouring in reinforcements. T-34 swinging around the hill here. Really nice play. T-34 leader getting the first shot off. Missing, though. T-34 missing. Why is this kind of showing its side armor? Oh, oh, there's the other T-34 here. Oh, but it goes down. ISU-122 is here, though. That's not going down. Will it get its shot off? Oh, it gets a side. The T-34 gets a side shot. But now it's turning. It should be safe now. T-34 gets another side shot on this T-34. Oh, there's so many T-34s. It's hard to keep track. This T-34 can't decide what to shoot. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. KV-1 off map. Oh, this thing is triple teamed. It's going to go down. Down it goes. So the armor, that's the thing with 358, though. The armor is slowly getting breaking, broken down. He doesn't have that much. Like, Incha just doesn't have much armor. That's just what it is. But now he's recaptured his fly. Incha now on the 13-11, finally turning it back around here. Farad currently on the ticket lead. Here's the off map of the 203, landing where we expected, but Insha just pushing across. Maxim, though, is there. We'll unload the Zakchiski. ISU-122, though, does have the pin on it here, and back the Maxim goes. Zis-2 in position, finds a T-34 leader here on the hill, and the ISU-122 takes out another T-34. Z uh, T-34-76 leader goes down. These are not good trades for Ferret at this point. Sapperty versus Avtos. Sapperty actually find the Avtos early, so they don't even have to fight them at close range. Off map is over. Infantry pushing back in. A lot of armor loss here, and all that's left are a bunch of infantry. And they're now Strelki. Although he did bring a sea face card of... Yeah, Ferret had a sea face card of Strelki DP, so I'm not sure why he decided on the Strelki. I guess because he thought he was going into the woods? P39 tries again, but gets forced off. Aftos haven't been moved or taking a lot of damage. Are they standing out in the open? They are. Ugh. Oh, I never actually zoom in to see like units get killed. Interesting. Very interesting. So Chiefs can go down to the Aftos. The Aftos can put out some good damage. T60 on the run to stay out of the range of the AT grenade there. So the T60 can't... F oh, oh, it's AP. No, it's APHE. Huh, so they can't fire on the move? Other than the machine gun? That's really weird. I've never noticed that. I don't use the unit very often, that's why, but really weird. Oh, and Farad does get back onto this flag, bringing it to a 12-12. Shulky DP not going to win this fight in the woods. VZ Vog get caught out. Group Sachiski fighting at long range with their automatic rifle. Not what they want to be doing. They need to fall back. I see one, two, two pushing out in the open here. This flag was recaptured. Well, not recaptured, but captured by Insha. Nice play there. Infantry number wise, both players have over 80 infantry, so I don't expect either of them to run out anytime soon. So availability of that is not a factor, although availability of armor for Insha 100% is. 
Although we don't see Ferret calling in many T34s at this point. He has a C phase card, so I'm 100% sure he's not out. He's got 18 in C, so there's no way he's out of T34s. But we do not see any T34s are coming. It's kind of surprising. P39 finally gets in the back of that P3, and it goes down. He's been waiting for that kill the whole game. Defense is here, though, for Farad falling apart up north. His push down south has sapped his energy up north. Off map coming down on the ISU-122S. How many does Inshaw have? Inshaw has four of them, and we've seen at least three. One, two, three. And I feel like one died. Yeah, yeah, it died to the SU-122. So there's no more ISU-122s. Like, this is it. What he has here is all he's got. P2 is just blotting out the sky. I mean, I've been saying the whole game, Fair needs to invest more in his AA. But he, he, he doesn't think he needs to. Nice triple star going on here. There is a combat in. Giving that beautiful veterancy. Although he's got two leaders like right next to each other. Kind of odd. So she's moving. I was about to say he's like moving out. To get hit by this KV-1. Inshaw back on the 13 level with the push in the town with the T-34 and the T-60 wiping out the infantry. Uh, T-34... I always forget. I can just look. 110 millimeters. If it gets a side shot here, that doesn't matter. Does not get the side shot. T-70 moving forward now. T-34 goes down, though. They do get a transmission damage. T-60 on the run. Not going to get there. So losing both those pieces of armor, that's a pretty big loss there for uh, Inshaw. Ferret needed something like that really bad. Something went down here. SU-85 went down to this ISU-122. This one's still alive. Inshaw just trying to finish the push on this hill, but the T-34 and KV are proving to be an issue. Rubzachiski should win this easily. Should barely be a fight. And it is not much of a fight. Down it goes. Another Strelke coming. Sapperty going to get unloaded here. There are still more T-60s and stuff rolling in. How many does he have? Eight of them. Along with the T-70s. I mean, he doesn't have that many. I can't believe there's still more coming. F-22s did get reloaded and continue to blast. Blast away. I'm not sure why he even called the 25 mils in. Like, honestly, like, if you're going to call just one in, it's not going to do anything. Like, you're going to call in AA. You got to call in enough AA that it matters. Inshaw's position in the town, though, also looking very weak. But Inshaw not on the flag lead. I mean, Inshaw definitely has traded better, but he's got so much invest in the back lines. It's ended up being, like, similar investments to the front lines. Yeah, Zachiski getting absolutely cream there. Transport killed. Now he'll recapture this ferret out of 13 level for a moment, but his over-aggressive push wasn't going to mean much. Shulky DP overwhelming the Strelke here, which they absolutely should every time, and down he goes. F-22 doing a lot of damage and suppression. BA-10, T-60 pushing around the hill here, and the pin is complete. That flag should flip any moment. T-70 should be able to finish off the Strelke. Will surrender them as long as they're past in the red. Ooh, but they stopped short of surrendering. Strelke are going to get away now. But now back to a 1311 for Inshaw up here in the town. Barry trying to put together enough troops to make a push forward. SU-76 of all things still somehow still left in the deck. I th it's just assumed he called those all out nay. Double T-34 coming in from Inshaw. Didn't think he'd have that much left. Ammo running low back here for these Katushas. Vizivod leader. Helping triple star these infantry and making them much stronger than their opponents. Strelke go down, but not before the Sapperty waste a grenade. The, uh, ISU-122 now taking out one of the T-34s, and now the transport load is cut down. Cut off, I mean, and that's 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 basically the end of the, the line for the southern frontier for Farad. I don't even know. I don't think Farad has many ISUs left, if any. Maybe one. I can't remember if he lost three or not. But with that loss, he's in a very bad place. Gets a nice loader wounded on the KV-1. Crit 45 mil. 
ISU-122S takes out an SU-75, uh, and that was the only real threat. Now the ISU's ice, ice might run out of ammo here, honestly. Gets the shot off. Misses, actually. This two shifted around to hit the KV-1. That's going to be a nice kill there any moment. Hmm. KV-1 does back out in time. He could be hitting it with the side on the strokey DP. T-34 goes down. Things not looking any better, although Ferret has recaptured the town with another blob of infantry, but it's still 14-10. P-2 bombers coming in. Finally see at least more twin. Nope, they're not more. It just moved forward. At least they're two-star now. But Inchon now on a solid 14-10. 25 mil going to go down here to the T-60. I don't... Yeah, I was going to say, 25 mil should have no chance of stopping this. Down it goes. Might even lose this flag here if Inchon's aggressive enough. And it looks like he's going to be. Here comes the P-2, though, for that ISU-122. Nope, gets it off just fine. Another flag here, though, now 15-9, double tick now achieved. Even with the town flag lost, he finally recaptured this hill flag. T-34 is really the only thing holding the ground. ISU-122 still alive, but was forced off the hill now. So now he's no longer covering this road, so maybe some reinforcements will get in. There's no more AP shells on the ISU-122S. Shulky DP is hitting from both sides now. I mean, they'll pick up a penetration at some point. ISU-122 fires an HE shell. Definitely going to cause a lot of... Uh, definitely cause a lot of suppression. Shulky DP trying so hard. Gets the fallback. What's the penetration on these things? 35. T-34 must have a fair bit more than that. Maybe 50 millimeters of side armor. ISU-122 goes down to the SU-76. It was falling back from the mortar strike. Nice play there by Farad. But Farad finally throws in the towel with Inch on that double tick. 34 minutes and 17 seconds. What a game. A Russian throw down there. Incha well out training fair, though. 34.95 to 23.15 there. Um, and we could see it on the board. Uh, the Zis 2s were key there. The lack of some such a AT weapon there for fair really hurts him. Uh, ISU-122S absolutely just dominated here. Uh, probably the best I've ever seen that unit perform. But in the hands of a player like Incha, it's not surprising. You can see all of them just doing a ton of damage. Very interesting match, to say the least. And if you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon. Check it out on another video. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.